of Easter. We're glad that you are with us and worshiping with us. Um, even though it may be a thundery day, it certainly is here in Augusta. And just one word, if by chance the power goes out, uh, you are to continue worshiping. And I hope you have downloaded the bulletin. Uh, I encourage your full participation, especially children. Uh, and kids, I need your help as always at the end when I do the dismissal. And this is one of those times I'm encouraging videos and pictures taken of you all in your hmm, PJs. Yes, I think so, uh, while you're watching the service. One announcement I had uh, asked if people would be interested in a Bible study in Acts, and I got a good response from that. And then I made the mistake of asking when you would like that to happen. And I got responses as particular as Thursday at 2 o'clock to any time after 5.30 to Mondays only. Please do not do it on Fridays. I think you get the gist. What I've decided is I'm going to record the Bible study, and you can then play it at the time that works best for you, and that will be available on Thursday. And now let us begin our worship with the singing of Christ is Alive. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. And we'll say together the Christ our Passover. Alleluia. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. 
for as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 16, to be read in unison. Protect, Protect me, me, O God, God for, for I take refuge in you. I have, I have said to the Lord, Lord you are my Lord, my good above all others. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with him, sworn with an oath to him, that he would put one of his descendants on the throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God. Yesterday we 
with joy was bright. The sun shone out with fairer light when to the longing eyes restored the apostles saw their risen Lord. His risen flesh with radiance glowed, his wounded hands and feet he showed, the scars the solemn witness gave that Christ was risen from the grave. O Jesus, King of gentleness, do thou thyself our hearts possess, that we may give thee all our days the willing tribute of our praise. O Lord of all, with us abide in this our joyful Easter tide. From every weapon death can wield, thine own redeemed forever shield. All praise, O risen Lord, we give to thee who dead again dost live, to God the Father equal praise, and God the Holy Ghost we raise. A reading from the Gospel according to St. John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written, so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is the second Sunday after Easter, and by the church calendar, that means we have been living one week into this Easter season. But in this strange reality, days and weeks run together, both on the secular calendar and on the church calendar. Is this Saturday or Sunday? It's hard to tell when most of us are still in our pajamas. We aren't, but you might be. And then we have to ask ourselves, is this really Easter? Or is it just another season of Lent? Because, my beloved, if we ever needed to see Jesus, it is now. My beloved, today we are looking for Jesus along with Anne and Duncan and Bailey Kolsch as they sit vigil with Lindsay, their daughter, 
who's begun a long journey to see Jesus face to face. And that feels like Lent. But it's Easter, and we want to see Jesus. Now, there are times when words fail me and the hurt is too great. And I'm not ashamed to confess that. So I'm grateful for friends like Donald Fishburne who give me words to lean on that I can then share with you. And what follows is a meditation that Donald wrote earlier this week, not for me, but for everybody. And he asked the same question we all ask at some time, how do we see Jesus? Donald said, the apostle Thomas the twin gets a bum rap. He's often called the doubter, but he wants to know the way. He was the first human being to call Jesus my Lord and my God. And the colic for his remembrance on the feast day of St. Thomas would have us pray, grant us also so perfectly and without doubt to believe in Jesus Christ our Lord. There are multiple appearances of the risen Christ described in the Gospels on that first Easter day at the empty tomb and including the road to Emmaus. Where was Thomas the Apostle on that Easter evening when the risen Lord came up to the same upper room in which he had washed the feet of his disciples and instituted the Lord's Supper the Thursday before? Who's to say that Thomas was not the courageously inquisitive one out looking for Jesus in the streets while the rest of the closest followers were in hiding, as you just heard The doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear. The risen Jesus isn't held by a tomb or shut out by locked doors, nor does our fear, confusion, or doubt thwart him. On Easter evening, he came, stood among them, gave them his peace, and then when they really saw, really saw and rejoiced, he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them, and that would get our attention these days. And he said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. Now check this out. Nothing could have kept Thomas away the next Sunday. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus, clearly wounded, scarred, crucified, and resurrected, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And then Thomas answers him, my Lord and my God. He saw what the other disciples had seen, and he witnessed to Jesus as Messiah and God. Then Jesus says to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not yet seen and yet have come to believe. Beloved, this Easter season is different from any we remember, but it is not the first Easter that the church doors were locked. This Easter season is different, and Jesus comes to us where we are in our struggles. He took with him into heaven the wounds humanity had inflicted, and now again he is with us in our need for healing. About our present times, the priest, professor, and preacher, Lauren Winner, wrote in the Washington Post this past Easter Eve, I wish I were gathering in the flesh with my church this Easter, but small, good things will come out of the distance, out of these emailed prayers and homilies, out of widows praying prayers alone at home, and families gathered at the kitchen table with a liturgy 
adapted for domestic use. And this, my beloved, is a day to celebrate all these small good things. This is a day to celebrate Thomas. I've always been grateful that Thomas was courageous as he gave voice to the hurt, confusion, sorrow, and longing that I feel, that we feel, God's people feel, during some very difficult times in life. Jesus, our Lord, does not brush aside our grief, exhaustion, weakness, anxiety, confusion, doubt, or anger. The risen Lord comes, and he does not hide his own wounds and hurts. He bears those, reveals those, and he embraces us, including all our emotions and doubts. He blesses us when all we have is an empty heart or a broken heart. He blesses us by coming into our hearts and raising us up in the spirit. And he calls us with Thomas to rejoice. Often he does this through the embrace of our fellow travelers and those who pray for us when we don't know how to pray and those pastors who care so deeply for us. Come, risen Lord Jesus, and walk with us when we are so weary we do not know if we can stand. You raise me up. You raise us up. Thank you for holding us as we come to see you again. In the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ, amen. Please join us in the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, God the, Father the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and, and grant, grant us your salvation. salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let, Let your, your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For, For only in you can, can we live, live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And, and guide us in, in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, you make us glad with a weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that in the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
And now we do the prayers of the people. Our Lord lives, for death has no more power over him. And so we, God's holy church, proclaim the resurrection, saying, Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. God of life, in gratitude and great joy, we thank you for the gifts of Christ's resurrection. We especially give thanks for those celebrating birthdays, for Gail Jarrell and Meredith Ferguson, for those celebrating anniversaries, for Dave and Julie Blake. <laughs> we give thanks for our partnership with Martinez Elementary School at the Claiborne at Westlake. On this day, give us hope, for Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Honoring the gifts of Christ's risen body, may we rise to serve all those whose needs keep them from seeing themselves as the image of God, for Christ has risen. The Lord, the Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. For all who have need of the gift of Easter, for all who journey from illness to health, from despair to hope, from grief to consolation, from loneliness to love, for all our brothers and sisters, that death may have no more power over us. We especially pray for those in need of healing, for Lindsay Kolsch, Linda Jewell, Allison Kennedy Owens, and Billy Oldham. For Christ is risen. The, the Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. For all who suffer and all who mourn, that today the Lord God will wipe away all tears. We pray for the departed, for Francis McCall Arnold, mother of John Arnold. For Christ is risen. The, the Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. May we have the persistent faith of Mary Magdalene and the surprised belief of Peter and John. May we long to be God's sign of life in our world, for Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. God of life, we thank you for the mystery planted in us, the paradox of life from death, and community from scattered disciples. We praise you for the dying which saves us from death and for the rising which brings us life. We pray as we live through Jesus, the risen one, in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we pray the prayer of St. Chrysostom together. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. And now join us in our closing hymn, which we will sing before the dismissal. Oh, oh, oh. 
My beloved, always remember how short life is and how little time we have to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love, make haste to be kind, and the rich and abundant blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. And now I'm hoping our kids are with us and will help me with the dismissal like you do on every Sunday. And I want you to do these hallelujahs so loud that you go over the thunder, past the miles, and come right into this sanctuary with me. So are you ready? Because I am. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.